In the next set of videos, we're going to go over the new topic of functions. And in this video, we're going to go over an introduction into functions. So what is a function? Functions are going to relate variables to one another so that when we have a specific input and we put that into our function, so here I'm going to denote function by fxn, so we have a specific input, we put it into our function, and a function is going to give us a single output value for that input depending on what our function is. So it's going to relate variables to one another so that when we put in a single input value into our function, we get a single output value. So let's look at an example of a function. y is equal to 3x plus 5. You guys have probably seen something like this many times before now, and this is actually a function. So here we have our output value. y is going to be our output value, whereas x is our input. So given a specific input value for x and our function is 3x plus 5, we're going to get a single output value of y depending on our input value of x. And traditionally, the way that we are going to write functions is to denote it as f of x f of x is equal to 3x plus 5. And f of x, this is just um, a traditional way of denoting a function. Instead of writing y is equal to 3x plus 5, we put f of x is equal to 3x plus 5. And that's because this function is going to depend on x. So let's put in an input value for this function and see what we get as an output. So let's say we choose the input value of 1. So we want our x to be equal to 1. So we're going to write that as f of 1, because now we're putting in 1 for x. And that means wherever we see x, we're going to put in 1. 3 times 1 plus 5. And that is going to equal to 8. So when our input value is 1, we're going to get an output value of 8. Our y is equal to 8 when our x is equal to 1. And you can actually do this both ways. It doesn't just go one way. We can also determine the specific input value that's going to give us a certain output value. So let's say we were told that the output value of a function is 20. So the output value is 20 and our function is still 3x plus 5 and we're asked to determine the value of x for which our output value is 20. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to set our y equal to 20. We know that our output value has to equal to 20 so this whole function has to be equal to 20. So we can put that 20 is equal to 3x plus 5 and if we want to isolate for x, we can move this 5 to this side, and that becomes 20 minus 5 is equal to 3x. And if we just give ourselves some more space here, that's going to become 15 is equal to 3x. And to isolate for x, we divide both sides by 3, and 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. So when we have an output value of 20, our input value is 5, if this is our function. So when x is equal to 5, this function is going to have a value of 20. Another thing that I want to go over is the idea of domain and range. And this is something that you're going to encounter when we are dealing with functions. So what are domain and range? So let's start off with domain. The domain is going to define the set of input values for x for which each input value is going to produce a single y value. So the domain is going to basically define our x values. Defines our x values for which each input x value produces a single output or y value. So our domain is going to define our x values. It's going to define our input values and those input values are going to give us a single output. So our domain is just going to restrict our possible values for x. So now what about the range? The range is going to define our set of output values. It's going to define our set of y values that we can get from our specific inputs. So our range 
is going to define our set of Y values or our set of output values that we can get for our input values. So our range is basically going to define our output values. It's going to restrict our possible Y values. So our domain is going to define our set of X values and our range defines our set of Y values. Another thing that I want to go over is that one of the most common ways to represent functions is actually to represent them through graphs. So in the last video, we looked at the sine and cosine functions, and we looked at the graphs of those functions. And just like those functions have graphs, you can graph any function that you are given. So let's look at this function here. f of x is equal to x plus 1. So this function, another way that we can write that is just y is equal to x plus 1. And we can graph this on a Cartesian plane. So we can set up our Cartesian plane right here. So we've got our Cartesian plane over here. And this function is just y is equal to x plus 1. So when x is equal to 1, when x is equal to 1, then y is going to be equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 3. When x is equal to 3, y is going to be equal to 4. And when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So here are our input values. Our input values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. And here are our output values, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going from an input value, an input x value, we're putting that into our function, and our function is x plus 1, and we're going to get an output value. And now we can graph this. So given the input value of x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 1. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. That's a point right here. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4. So this graph is just going to keep going linearly in this direction. And that is the graph of this function. f of x is equal to x plus 1. So that's just a quick introduction to functions. Functions are basically going to relate variables to one another. So we're relating our y and x variables. We're putting our y variable in terms of x here. And it's going to relate variables to one another such that when we give a specific input value, we're given a single output that is going to depend on our function. And in the next few videos, we're going to go into a lot more detail on functions, the different functions that we can get, and graphing functions.